Hello everyone, back to your day's first video during the March 2018 month head forecast for today's uh, first video. So we're going to have a uh, recap on the February uh, forecast, which I think went quite well. We're going to do the March month head forecast and at the end of the video having sneak peek at uh, April. Just say coming up later on today, we've got the weekend forecast. So I'm going to have a detailed look at uh, the weather for the weekend. There'll be the video and the written version to that, you'll be able to find the video on the home page and the written version. You get that from buttons at the top of the page. But starting us off is the um, March 2018 uh, month head forecast. So just to begin uh, with a recap on February. Now, February forecast uh, went very well. We predicted a colder than average uh, February, but not a huge deviation. We expected around sort of half a degree uh, below average. We thought the first part of the month would probably be quite cold. Then there would be a period of milder weather. And uh, then we thought actually the coldest spell of the month and of the winter would probably occur late on following a sudden stratospheric warming. Well, all the elements came together and uh, that's indeed what happened. So we started off fairly chilly. We went through a milder phase that um, occurred whilst a sudden stratospheric warming was taking place. We got the uh, sudden stratospheric warming that in turn increased the blocking signal, we uh, centred the high pressure over Scandinavia, and we brought in those bitterly cold uh, easterly winds with the beast from the east, which did indeed deliver us our coldest spell uh, of the month and of the winter, uh, right at the end of the month. So I'm very, very happy, very pleased with the Gazrovis.com uh, February 2018 uh, forecast. Doesn't always happen, doesn't very often go to plan like that. So uh, when it does, why not blow your own trumpet? So um, we'll start off by having a look at the CET for February. We haven't got the UK wide uh, figures in yet. The um, data is still being correlated uh, for the UK at the UK Met Office. When we get that in, we'll be able to bring you that information. And of course, then we'll be able to look at the winter uh, as, as well uh, in terms of the climate averages. But we have got the CET for uh, February. I don't think the UK wide figures will deviate greatly uh, from this. So um, for the century in temperature, for February, we, uh, we came out at 2.9, which is nearly one degree uh, colder than average. And that's set against the old um, temperature average, 61 to 1990, which is a colder, older and colder temperature average. If you was to set that against a more modern uh, temperature average, such as uh, 81 to 2010, you'll probably find a bigger deviation, actually. It'll probably be over a degree colder uh, than average set against uh, 81 to 2010. So maybe it was a little bit colder, actually, than uh, we anticipated, primarily just because of how severe it got right in the closing days uh, of the month. But um, anyway, it uh, certainly went quite well, went to plan, uh, most definitely the February forecast. So really pleased with how um, that happened. You'll notice that March has started off on a really, really cold note with an, an, with an anomaly of eight degrees below the 61 to 1990 average at minus 3.5 just for the first day of uh, March. Let's see what the long-range models are predicting for uh, March. So this is the CFS V2 700 millibar height anomaly, uh, and it's placing an area of above average heights around Greenland, and then an area of below average heights underneath it through uh, the UK and sort of um, Western Europe and Central Europe too, which uh, means for the jet stream, we're doing something like that. We are placed on the cold side of the jet stream here uh, with this 700 millibar height anomaly, and so you'd expect quite a cold and unsettled month. Uh, if that's right, with a pretty strong blocking signal uh, centred there over Greenland. Temperature anomalies for March are looking like that with CFS V2, and uh, we're coming out with a north-south split across Europe, really. So southern Europe is coming out with a pretty mild month, actually, above average temperatures from Portugal and Spain in the west over to Greece uh, in the east. But go north of the Alps, and uh, you find a much, much colder looking signal. So much of northern, central and western, northwestern Europe is uh, looking colder than average here with a significantly cold uh, deviation for the temperature across particularly Scandinavia and northeastern parts of Europe. The British Isles is coming out, an island coming out uh, with temperature anomalies 
of around a degree to uh, two degrees colder than average. So it is going for a substantially uh, colder than average month. Precipitation is also coming out above average. So a cold and wet month really being signalled by uh, the CFSP2. Quite a substantially wet month for uh, the UK and for Ireland and also for uh, France and down in Spain and Portugal as well. It's looking really driving average up to the northeast, which is where, of course, we've got the blocking uh, signal. So essentially what's happening is that uh, we've got a blocking feature being signaled by the CFSV2 to our north, which is pushing the jet stream south, taking the rain-bearing systems south uh, with it. Um, and uh, for the UK and for France, we're kind of in between, in between really, but uh, we've got a lot of low pressure around us, but within that we are entrenching pretty cold air uh, from the north, so there's clearly wintry potential there going into uh, March. I mean, bear in mind, it's uh, the start of the spring, so um, the wintry potential will be moderated to some degree. But uh, obviously, with a cold of an average and a wet of an average signal, there could well be a, an above-average in incidence, if this is right, of uh, snow through the course of the month. So a pretty wintry scene, actually, being forecast by the CFSV2. Uh, for March, if you have a look at the Beijing Climate Centre, so these are the 500 millibar heights uh, broken down into 10-day uh, periods. We start off, though, having a look at the 500 millibar height and only for the month. And uh, we find a very similar signal to CFSV2. Really. We've got below average heights to the south. We've got a blocking signal uh, to the north, particularly centred around Greenland. We are in a very similar position with the jet stream, doing something like that uh, with the jet. So uh, we're on the cold side of the jet, we're close to the trough of low pressure, it's a blocking feature. Uh, it implies quite a cold and unsettled uh, signal, actually, for um, this uh, for this month. So that's the first 10-day period. That takes us from the 1st uh, through to the 10th of um, March. Uh, this is how the next 10 days is looking. This is going from the 11th through to the 20th of March. Again, very similar, but there is a bit of a weakening of the blocking signal over Greenland. But we still have the above-average uh, heights up there. And they still have a jet stream of below average heights to uh, the south. So essentially, it's the same idea, really. Cold and unsettled going through about middle of 10 days, but less so, less of a cold signal, if you like, compared to uh, the first 10 day period. And then we go through to the uh, final 10 day period, which is the 23rd of March through to the 30th. And uh, we find that we've got above average heights beginning to rise to our south, then, which will start to put the, push the jet stream. Uh, back northwards. So, and a lot of the long range output is sort of going with this idea that we start off with this extreme blocking pattern, a lot of cold weather, of wintry potential, possibly running into the middle of the month. And then the second half of the month sees the jet stream pushing northwards. And that's when true spring starts to set in, sort of in the final 10 days or so of March when we begin to drag up much milder air from the middle of the Atlantic. Temperature anomalies for March, however, with the Beijing Climate Centre are coming out colder than average. So that uh, milder sort of latter period isn't enough to um, stop us having a colder than average month. Most of Europe also coming out with a colder than average uh, March. Precipitation anomalies a little bit above average, perhaps not quite as much as we see with CFSB2, but above average precipitation with a colder than average month, there is a little bit of wintry potential in there. So Essentially, uh, both models are going for the same story, which is uh, a lot of blocking to start off with and a cold, wintry first half potentially to March. And then the second half, we go into a much more spring-like uh, type pattern and we start to get on uh, with spring proper. Uh, and I think that's what we're going to go with, actually, for the uh, monthly forecast uh, this month. So I think we're going to suggest... Possibly a slightly cold of an average month again, but I'm not expecting a March 2013. I'm not expecting, uh, I mean, I'm not ruling it out, but I'm not expecting uh, a March that is severely cold and uh, sort of snow um, in the second half particularly, uh, and it all gets rather severe. I think we probably had, famous last words, I think we probably had the coldest weather already that this March 
uh, is going to give us. And whilst the first half, I think, will be cold and average and will have some wintry potential, I think that will be set off to some degree by uh, a more pleasant spring-like type pattern albeit still quite unsettled probably, but starts to set up in the second half of the month. So a month of two halves, cold and wintry first half, um, a more spring-like type second half, overall a little bit cold of an average, but not uh, a March 2013, not severely cold, not our coldest March for uh, decades like we had a few years ago. reason I'm not going for that isn't so much what the long-range models are doing. It's actually because I think it would be very unusual to get such a cold March so close to the March of 2013. So um, I'm going to gamble a little bit because uh, it is possible. We have had a big sudden stratospheric warning, so it's possible the blocking signal will be a lot stronger than I'm anticipating. It's a bit of a gamble. I'm going to say not as cold as March 2013. But with a cold first half... And uh, some wintry potential. In terms of precipitation, may come out a little bit above average. And particularly in the first half of the month, I think there is the potential here for uh, more wintry weather to uh, be showing up. That would be particularly so for the north. But all places possibly at risk of some wintry potential for the first half of the month. Finally, a quick sneak peek at April. Uh, and there's not much to go on there. This is the 700 millibar height anomaly for April. Uh, 27, 2018, um, from CFSB 2 and, uh, well, essentially, we've just got a bit of a, a mid-Atlantic ridge, really, around there. Otherwise, there's nothing else, um, to be going on with. So, I think we'd better leave that alone, and, uh, we'll come back at the beginning of April, and we'll try and get a forecast together for April. Hopefully, we'll have a slightly clearer uh, signal uh, there because uh, I mean you couldn't really make a forecast at all based on what that's showing so that's your uh, March 2018 month head forecast a month of two halves cold and wintry at times first half more spring like second half overall a little bit colder than average with precipitation probably a bit above average and a greater incidence than normal particularly in the first half of snow particularly for the north Come back later on for the weekend broadcast, but that's all for now, and thanks for watching.